welcome, 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 welcome to JMC Live. So we have good news and more good news. So the Harvest Revival is really good success for those that were able to participate in prayer and everything else that, that we had set up for it. That was wonderful of you. Um, we also wanted to thank all the many wonderful people that were involved in helping participate in making this happen. And it was just a great success. We want to cover tonight um, some of the different things. We have some exciting news that not even Miranda really knows about. We now have another site where we'll be able to um, have an, a, a voice uh, thanks to uh, Elon Musk. I just got a message five minutes before this broadcast started that I now have some tools on Twitter that we will use at the next JMC Live. So I tried to set it up in the two minutes before I had to go live, and I, I, I realized I'm going to need another device to do all this effectively. But anyway, it's going to be kind of a mixture of what you're seeing now with um, Facebook or YouTube. Um, it's going to be really great to see exactly what, what God is doing in our wonderful midst of social media as God continues to grow and bless all the wonderful things that will be happening uh, tonight. As I said, this is about um, the Harvest Revival. So what I want to talk about um, is just a little bit behind the scenes stuff. So we had like a prayer group. We had people that were praying with us, uh, conversating, you know, about a month or two in advance. Some of them six months in advance. Uh, we were getting people together. What we wanted to do for this first one, because of all the uh, weird cybersecurity stuff, um, regardless of where someone, you know, believes or not believes. We had a bunch of problems with having live streams of any type and people were, you know, shutting it down or just being an issue. So we thought we'll just pre-record the music, we'll pre-record the speaking, we'll get it all put together and we'll get it out there. And that's pretty much what we did. Uh, we partnered with Facebook and some other individuals to get the message out and people are getting things out to different people behind the scenes. Many of them didn't were prayer warriors that were just focusing in on what God was doing. So for the Harvest Revival, we reached about 4,500 people. Um, we had about 32 messages throughout it. Um, different people were clicking on different things like that. And I've been looking through some of the uh, details. We had people... It was a split, about 50-45 on who saw what. We had people from all over uh, the U.S. that saw this, and there were people even overseas that saw this as well. So it was a very good success in regards to people got the message out. We had people in the week, the seven days before we were promoting it, uh, people were coming for prayer, even without even going to the revival. They're all like, hey, can you pray for me? I'm in the hospital. Hey, can you pray for me for my son? Hey, can you help me find this? Hey, I'm disabled. Can you help me find um, something, you know, a place to go get help? So we were facilitating people all across the U.S. needing to go to different things. Sometimes we had to refer them to the Salvation Army. Sometimes we refer to them to something local. Other times we were actually praying with them. Some of them were communicating with us. Some of them have become um, followers of the page. So I believe this is a great success. Uh, conversations have been... Are we going to do this again? And I would say yes. I believe um, that we would we we got that we will do this again uh, next year. That we will have another harvest revival. Um, as far as uh, all the wonderful things that has happened since then, um, I have to tell you that that it hasn't stopped. And it's not going to stop because there's a lot of things coming up. This is that season and time of year where we're preparing our Christmas music. Miranda actually asked me, should I sing a Christmas music song? And I could, but I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to wait until a little bit later on. We have a surprise coming up as well. We're going to have an interview that we're going to do on the next show. Uh, and But we're not going to have that many shows in uh, November or December because everything going on that we're trying to get get out there but I have to tell you this um, opportunity so when me and Miranda were sitting here watching this and watching the message Miranda had not heard Tove Rose she had not heard Jim Maddox at all 
So that was the first time she was listening to the first time as it was airing live. And um, I had a difficult, I, I didn't have, you know, it was, it was kind of interesting watching, you know, Brenda go through this. And many times she was raised her hand. She was praying lots of great stuff. Um, testimonies that came out of this. Um, some of the people that we've talked to and communicated either on our personal pages or on the actual event, people were talking about how God has like transformed their lives and made a big difference in their lives and that God has, you know, been in those moments, whether they were sick or someone else was sick or dealing with something that was wrong. So this was an amazing opportunity to see what God is doing and how he wants to transform the season that we're in right now. I know a lot of people are struggling right now with wondering what's going to happen with the rest of the year. Uh, a lot of people are wondering where uh, their next steps are going to be and what God's going to do. So for tonight, uh, this is going to be, it's not going to be a full, full hour tonight, which is fine because God has a big plan here. So for tonight, since it was, it's not going to be like a really big recap because like, there's just so many things that have happened that I'm not allowed to say that for those that were involved in it know exactly what's happened with those messages, those people that are involved with the lives that are changed. Some of them I'm waiting for some information back to see where God is taking them next and what God is wanting to do and how he's wanting to operate and move us to those next steps and those next seasons in our lives. So I have to tell you right now, if you miss the Harvest Revival, if you didn't have a chance to see this, it's still out there on the Facebook page. It's still out there on the YouTube page. It's on the podcast. You can still tune on that. It's two nights. It's a little over an hour per night. So if you want to break this up over a couple of week period, you can do that. It's fine. Um, again, this is just an amazing opportunity just to see what God is doing. So the messages that we had um, for, for Toe Rose, it was more of a personal story. I've known him since 2005 when i was a lead personal assistant for someone in the entertainment and media industry and my history with tove is that he was a uh chaplain for hollywood and other places so when i was working as a lead personal assistant for the hollywood guy we just intersected in fact the myspace profile that I was having messages to that's how we got introduced through through myspace and it was pretty great conversations and different things that are happening finding out what god is doing in hollywood finding out what god is doing in the messianic area for instance ito rose as you may be well aware he wrote a new translation for the uh, in hebrew and english for the messianic jew it's a new messianic version of the bible which is really great you can go out there and get it if you can't afford it, you can get it on the app. It's available free on the app. So it's a wonderful opportunity to sit there and, and read this version to see what God says in a Messianic Jewish version to continue to reach the gospel. Number two. So my good friend Jim Maddox. I've known Jim Maddox since the year 2000. So 22 years. Like I said, both these individuals are mentors in my life. Uh, Jim Maddox was one of the ones that gave money for me to go to South Africa 20 years two years ago. Uh, he's friends with uh, the person who introduced me that you may remember the interview with, Billy Baldwin, who used to be the radio DJ. And that's how we got introduced. And then he donated towards my uh, missionary trip to South Africa 22 years ago. Uh, we stayed in contact all this time. Um, next steps. So we're not stopping here. We realize that there are other revivals happening. In fact, this week there's a revival in Columbus and one in Oregon that we've been invited to, but obviously my work schedule, I couldn't get off and go to, um, I couldn't get off so I could go to either one of these events. So I had to miss both of them. One of our good friends, uh, Paul I was speaking in the one in Columbus. Our good friend, Dr. Aaron Winter is the one hosting the one in Oregon. And there's several others that are in Texas and other places as well. Speaking of Texas, there's a, uh, Chris, uh, not Christmas. I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a mic, uh, singing mic group coming up that's going to help facilitate live events and publishing them towards Facebook so people can find out where people are singing and people are having events. So that's going to be something we'll be sharing about as well. Also, there is uh, our wonderful friend Denise uh, Dittman Cook with her Queen City uh, Promotions, Queen City Music Promotions. There's going to be really great stuff happening down the pipe. 
Then our good friend Andy Lewis. He's got some great stuff coming on as well. And we're already having plans for the next year's revival. There's plans of maybe a spring and a fall or maybe just another fall. We're going to look into this more and see what logistically works. Uh, again, as I said, next week is going to be the Jan interview. So we're going to have Jan's interview. We'll be not having any more interviews for the rest of the year after that. And then we're going to focus in on this. Um, getting ready for the Christmas show. We'll have a Thanksgiving show as well. And that will be it for this year. We might have one more show in December and then it's 2023. And we're going to roll that back out. And we'll be having the shows weekly again at that point. Like I said, when I started this program, through the wonderful power of Elon Musk five minutes before it started, I now have a new tool on Twitter because I got a message five minutes before it started. Hey, you might want to use this. So this will open up the opportunities for us to be live elsewhere, um, which op op opens up the next question as we are having this on Facebook, we're having this on YouTube, we're having this on TikTok, we're having this on Clapper. We're also thinking, and now we're going to have it on Twitter as well. There's also another possibility. Um, we're looking into possibly going live on Rumble, either starting at the Christmas show would be the earliest or sometime next year. We're logistically looking through that, seeing what makes sense and seeing where God wants to lead us next. And yes, there'll be opportunity sometimes next year, Lord willing, that we will have live in-person events for either me, Miranda, or the both of us. On another note, one other thing that's happened that is really great that you need to know about that we can recap because all this stuff's happened all at the same time. Miranda has actually gone out and her Smitten Mitten expedition. I know I may be getting ahead of myself sharing this, but we just finished getting the Smitten Mitten expedition items out. And for those of you who are wondering, what is a Smitten Mitten expedition? It sounds pretty cool, don't it? Smitten Mitten expedition um, am i sounding a little weird here well i hope i am hopefully it caught your mind when i said smitten mitten expedition what it is is miranda uh is a crafty woman and um as i'm scrolling through her hilarious facebook feed and i want to say this but i cannot because i'll get in trouble because that's funny but anyway the point is is that she makes hats and scarves and sometimes we give out gloves and sometimes there's jackets and other things but Two days ago, what we did, um, the crocheted hats and scarves and headbands for this year's Smitten Mitten Expedition was donated. There was um, some women items that were sent to a women's homeless shelter. Uh, there are men and children items that went to a local ministry here in Columbus. And she had several bags of those go out. And if you looked at the ministry page... If you looked on our personal page, you'll see some of those items as they get created. Um, we really haven't had to buy a lot of the yarn for this. It typically has been people that have, you know, had yarn and said, I want to help or pointed us towards where we could get yarn. And it's just moved on and on and on. And it was really great just to see what's going to happen. Um, as Miranda is making this in spite of the sickness and the pains and the things she goes through, she continues to be a blessing to others, even when she's not able to go out and do as much as she wants to in the way that she wants to and how she wants to. So, like I said, there's a lot of different things going on simultaneously for this to happen to see what God is doing. So, like I said, social media is going to change for us uh, probably around the Christmas show. We'll, have, we'll be out there in more um, ways to get that broadcast out, which will lead us into 2023. Lord willing, um, as long as different things happen, we will have more music out there. Like I said, we're going to have two new Christmas songs that we'll have out for the holiday season, for the Christmas season. We will um, be preparing people for interviews for next year. It's my understanding that there may be some conferences and some other social media avenue things that I'll be involved in starting around February and March that will prepare us for what exactly God wants to do in those regards. And the rest of the future is in God's hands. As we say here, we're working together to fulfill the Great Commission. We're looking to see what God is doing. 
like I said, there's just so many countless things of people said they, you know, they watch the revival and they're, they're blessed by the message. You know, they're wanting to reach out to Brother Jim and they're wanting to reach out to Tove. Some people may have already know who they were and they're, they were glad to see this again. It's those kinds of messages, those kinds of heartfelt things. And then, like I said, there's some of them that are more like things have happened. And I wasn't, I'm not allowed to share because that, that's just, you know, how sensitive some things were. But in all in all, I believe God has this great opportunity, these great moments ahead of us and seeing exactly what he wants to do and where he wants to lead us and how he wants us to get there. Because this is now the time as we prepare to, you know, we're passing the mantle towards other people. We're transforming, you know, the situations and people's lives and we're preparing for future generations of what God wants to do in their lives. We have to be prepared in and out of season because even though we're not having a full broadcast tonight. That doesn't mean God's not doing something somewhere else. God is still working in your life and in my life, no matter where we go and how we get there and what we do. So I want to encourage you tonight as we go forward, working together to fill the Great Commission, that we seek out what God is doing in this season. Because... You never know. Like I said, we had like a bundle of 32 some odd messages for different people. That's 32 different individuals whose lives were changed over a seven day period. 5,000 people reached in seven days. What, what could you do with just one hour? One minute of your time to talk about Jesus, to share about Jesus and what God is doing and how he wants to tra change your life and move you to those next places and what God wants to do and how he wants you to get there. I know it's not easy all the time as, as a lot of times, you know, some people are looking for, you know, stats and figures and, you know, big numbers and, you know, notoriety and fame and all that. Being a Christian has none of that. It's not going to give you money. It's not going to give you fame. It's not about being the center of everything. It's about doing what God wants you to do. And there's a lot of things that you do to help people. It doesn't need to be blasted all over social media. You don't have to tell all your friends and family. It's between you and God. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I'm working on an article related to a program that we already did on here. And we also already did in Malaysia and Singapore and Vietnam and our Asian countries called After the Blessing. I'm working on getting um, that article together and getting it published uh, for next month so that it will reach a different grouping than what the message of what I did in 10 minutes to 30 minutes. So this reading will be probably about a page, page and a half, a good five, 10 minute read at most. And hopefully it will be a blessing before, during, and after of their own blessing in the lives of the others that come across their lives. All this and a lot more is planned. Again, um, in some ways I have a little more time on my hands to uh, figure out what we're going to do versus, you know, working 12-hour shifts. Now I'm working eight. So God's given me lots of opportunity to make some changes and do some different things so then I can see exactly where God wants to go and I'm, I'm not, you know, tied up anymore like I was before, which means more ministry opportunities for next year as we plan because some folks uh, need multiple months ahead for planning. Like I said, many things are going to go forward that we'll discuss um, after after Christmas and the following year in 2023. We'll probably be doing weekly shows depending on certain schedules. And some of those will eventually become interviews again. Um, there may be some cancellations of the regular James C. Live program for different things we're going to be involved in, which leads to the next thing. Saturday nights at, at 8 o'clock Eastern is where we're, we're live on Clapper. Um, Wednesday night, I'm leading worship. Thursday night is a Bible study. And Saturday night is a Bible study. Sunday night is another um, worship opportunity on Clapper. Also on social media, for those that are on YouTube and Facebook, we've been facilitating, um, sharing, and communicating in the um, in a couple of different uh, church uh, page uh, social media live events on Sunday. When I when I say this, it really starts like Friday night because we're connected internationally. So there are churches that go live Friday nights. That's their Saturday. Saturday it's their Sunday. 
and then Sunday is their Monday. So I'm covering all corners of the globe. So I got people in India. I got people in Malaysia. We got people in Thailand. We got people in South Africa. We got people in Russia. We got people in Mexico. We got people in Canada and elsewhere that are going live on their church services. So we have a full day. Um, normally starting like 6 p.m. on Saturday night all the way until the end of the evening around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. And we're trying to share some of them. Sometimes Miranda's watching one and I'm watching another because there's different folks wanting us to communicate. So it's there, there's no reason in today's society, if you go to a regular church service, there's no reason why you couldn't watch another one or, you know, facilitate, you know, something else because being with god isn't just a sunday and wednesday experience and unfortunately a lot of places as we know it's only a sunday morning experience some of them are sunday morning and wednesday night or sunday or thursday but it's only a two-day event and then there's nothing else what do you do what do you do all your time i know you got to shop for groceries i know you got to drive i know you got to eat i know you got to clean i know you have to work but between the hours of 7 p.m and you know Let's say you got to cook. So let's make it 8.30 p.m. to 10. I know some of you have kids, so that leaves you a half an hour. Well, there's a half an hour Monday through Friday that you can worship God. So that's the thing. The devil wants to keep us so busy that we don't even have a half an hour Monday through Friday anymore. He wants us... He wants to keep breaking the toilets. He wants to keep causing kids to be upset. He wants to keep making people angry and causing us to be stressed out and causing problems and chaos and discord. And God doesn't want any of that. He wants us to, to, to worship him in spirit and in truth beyond what the things that come in our lives. And we do what God calls us to do. So at this point, we're going to shift and we're going to go into a prayerful mindset. Because I want us to pray for those that were involved with the Harvest Revival. Pray for those that are preparing for the you know, Thanksgiving Christmas season. As this time is good for some. And this time has been bad for some. It all depends on what someone's experienced. And for those of us that haven't experienced or we have, we overcome it by the power of Jesus Christ. What can we do to be a blessing to someone else? There in the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you right now. We just pray, God, that you just bless those that have come across these broadcasts, whether they're my ministry message or somebody else, any Christian they've come across, that they will be a representation of Jesus Christ. And God, if they're not being a representation of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will still speak to them beyond the fact that someone has been a flaw in their sin for life, their flesh, and been a bad representation of you, that you will still reach them regardless, that you'll break that devil bond on people's lives that say, well, people aren't perfect and they're hypocrites and they're causing all these problems. I don't want to follow God. People need to not follow people. They need to follow God. They need to follow Jesus. So Lord, now we just ask you that you just wrap your arms around people today, that you strengthen them, that you guide them, that you direct them, no matter where they are, no matter what they do, that they will be a blessing and a strength in our lives, that you'll help their families, you'll help their children, you'll help their parents, you'll help their job, you'll help their school, their transportation, their finances, you'll help their health, you'll help them in everything that they do, and you invade into every place of their lives. Reveal who Jesus Christ really is. Not who I am, not who they are, not who some other ministry is. Not who has the new CD or the book out or the t-shirt out. But who Jesus Christ really is. Who you really are to them. Let them understand that before the blessing, during the blessing, and after the blessing, the blessing continues. Let them understand that their lives can make a decision that you don't have to follow riches of fame. You can follow and God, no matter where you are, whether you're poor or rich, that that we must realize that we are in a spiritual warfare, as Jim Maddox discussed about during the revival, that there are things, some things that you don't need to participate in and be involved in that causes things that happen to you and others that are a hindrance to serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we just want to thank you for all the wonderful things that you've done in our lives and the lives of others, that you'll continue to strengthen people and lead them on the paths of, of truth and peace and honesty, goodness, to be able to be a servant of Jesus Christ. 
that many people will say, here I am, send me, I will go. I will sit down and do what you call me to do. I will be the person you want me to be, and I will be a blessing to others. I will be a servant to others in the good times and the bad. As we prepare for these holiday seasons, for the Christmas Thanksgiving season, for whatever's going on, people getting ready for football games or, or whatever it is they're doing, as this becomes an even more busy time, work becomes more busy, some jobs become more slow, there's uncertainty, there's good, there's bad, whatever it is that's going on in someone's life, Jesus Christ would be the center of their life, the center of what they do, the center of how they operate and where they go, so that no matter what happens, that they will be a representation of Jesus Christ. God, we want to thank you for all these wonderful things. We want to thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of the many people that will be impacted by this. Again, we're talking about people that hear this message. May their families and their friends and their associates and their co-workers be blessed in Jesus' name. And we don't have to know what happens or what does not happen. We don't know what happens to all the people who touch those hats and scars. We don't have them by name. We don't know what happens to their families. We don't know what happens to the people in that school. We don't know what happens to them in those shelters. We don't know. And we don't have to know. But you know, God, you see all and you know all and you're in the middle of all at all times. You know what has happened, what is happening right now and what will happen in the future. And you control everything that happens. You only allow the devil to do so much before you say no. And the devil's time is short and will come to an end. So God, we want to thank you for all these things, knowing who you are in our lives and what you're going to do in our lives and the lives of others. By the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. We want to thank you again. We want to appreciate every single one of you that have stopped by on the different broadcasts, whether it's a podcast or it's an audio stream or a video stream somewhere, either during the broadcast, you know, you've written us maybe before, maybe you've tuned in for a few seconds, maybe you're listening to this on the, like I said, on the podcast later on, maybe you're watching this later as a, as a rebroadcast, because you're interested in finding out what's happening. We just want you to know more about Jesus, and we want to thank you for taking the time to hear us talk about our Lord and Savior. And with that said, I just want to say thank you again for all the wonderful times that, that you have come by and you've listened and you, you've seen what God has done in our lives and the lives of others. And you partner with this and you work with this to do what? To work together to fulfill the Great Commission. God bless you and have a good night.